What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfect Status where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic. Picmonic is a wonderful tool for medical students, nursing students, dental students, pharmacy students, all kinds of students, especially if you are a visual learner like me. Today I'll show you how you can use Picmonic to learn microbiology and integrate it with pathology, pharmacology, and internal medicine. So let's get started. This is my eighth microbiology video with Picmonic. You will find all of them organized in a playlist called Medicosis Picmonic on YouTube. Here is a list of the organisms discussed in video number one and video number two, three, four, all the way until today. In today's video, we are talking about gram-negative rods, specifically Legionella and Helicobacter pylori. But in Helicobacter pylori, I'll show you several picmonics in different areas of medicine, including microbiology, pathology, internal medicine, pharmacology, and others. So what is microbiology? It's the study of small life. Microbes are either bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites. And that's why the field of microbiology studies bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. Let's talk about bacteria. By using the gram stain, we can divide them into gram positive and gram negative. If you're gram positive, you will stain purple. But if you're gram negative, you'll appear pink. If you're gram positive, you could be a coccus, i.e. spherical, or a bacillus, like a rod. Similarly, if you are gram negative, you could be a coccus or a rod. In today's video, we're talking about gram negative rods. Quick review on the gram positives, cocci and rods. The cocci. The next question should be, are you catalase positive or catalase negative? If you are a rod, the next question should be, are you spore forming or non-spore forming? The non-spore forming were discussed in video number one. The spore forming anaerobic were the topic of video number two. Staphylococci were mentioned in video three. The streptococci in video four. More bacteria were mentioned in video 5. Neisseria and Moraxella, video number 6. H. Influenzae, Bordetella, Pastorella, Brucella, Francisella, video number 7. Today's video number 8, it's time for Legionella, which is a gram-negative rod, and H. pylori, which is a gram-negative curved rod. If you want a chart to help you classify these bacteria, there is a wonderful one at Picmonic. The link is in the description box. And now let's give the microphone to Legionella. This Picmonic covers the high yield characteristics to know in regards to the bacterial organism Legionella, represented by the Legionnaire soldier. Legionella is a bacillus, demonstrated by the rod. Though this bacteria is classified as gram-negative, it is hard to visualize because it does not gram-stain well, and this is shown by the poor gram-cracker. To grow Legionella, a special medium is required in the form of charcoal yeast with iron and cysteine, illustrated here as the charcoal in the sink with iron and cysteine. This infectious agent does, however, readily stain well with silver stain, recalled by the silver stain on this character's clothing. Legionella is a hydrophile, or water lover, and is often transmitted through water sources such as AC units, cooling towers, hot water systems, and fountains, which can be remembered by the source of water. Of note, smokers and those with heavy alcohol consumption are at increased risk of contracting a Legionella infection, exhibited by this character smoking and drinking. One of the most important diagnostic hallmarks of Legionella is that it can be confirmed by the presence of Legionella antigen in the urine of affected individuals. This is manifested by the ant gem in the urinal. So let's recap the characteristics of Legionella. This organism is a bacillus that gram stains poorly. It requires a special medium of charcoal yeast with iron and cysteine to grow and can be visualized with silver stain. It loves water and is commonly found in or near water sources. Smokers and heavy drinkers are at increased risk of Legionella infection. And remember, diagnosis can be made by detecting Legionella antigen in the affected person's urine. Legionella is the Legionnaire. It's a rod. It is gram-negative, although it stains poorly with gram stain. You better use the silver stain, culture it on charcoal yeast agar enriched with iron and cysteine. Legionella lives in water sources. Smokers and heavy drinkers are at high risk. You can diagnose it by detecting the antigen in the urine. Please keep this in mind because when we talk about Helicobacter pylori, I'll tell you that you can diagnose it by detecting the antigen in the stool, not in the urine. 
This Picmonic reviews the signs, symptoms, and treatments for disease caused by the infectious agent Legionella pneumophila, shown as the Legionnaire soldier. Symptoms caused by this gram-negative bacillus begin with high fever, represented by the fever beaver. It also causes diarrhea, visualized by the toilet, as well as an increase in liver enzymes, depicted here by the up-arrow liver enzymes. Additionally, Legionella causes hyponatremia, shown here by the hippo salt shaker. Other, more severe consequences of Legionella infection is kidney damage, caused by type 4 renal tubular acidosis, viewed here as the kidney playing the tuba with an acidic lemon and 4 fork. The most important association to recall with Legionella infections is the potential for developing severe atypical pneumonia, manifested here as the ATP X-ray screen on nude Mona. Legionella is commonly identified in community-acquired immunocompetent patients as well as nosocomial infections. Legionella is also responsible for Pontiac fever, pictured here as the Pontiac car, which is a milder respiratory infection that presents classic flu-like symptoms. Most patients show radiographic evidence of infection by day 3 of infection. Treatment includes fluoroquinolones, recalled here by the flower queen, and this class of drug is composed of antibacterial agents that cause disruption of DNA replication and end in the suffix floxacin. Macrolides are another class of pharmaceutical agents that have proven effective in treating this infection, comprised of erythromycin, azithromycin, and clarithromycin. The macrolides are shown as the macaroni lights. So let's summarize Legionella disease. These patients commonly present with high fever and diarrhea. This illness leads to laboratory findings of increased liver enzymes, hyponatremia, and type 4 renal tubular acidosis. Legionella causes a severe atypical pneumonia and can also cause Pontiac fever. Treatment consists of fluoroquinolones and macrolides. The diseases caused by Legionella include Legionnaire disease with the characteristic high fever, diarrhea, liver enzymes are high, but serum sodium is low. Legionella gives you an atypical pneumonia as well as Pontiac fever. The treatment is fluoroquinolones and macrolides. Now let's talk about H. pylori, which can lead to peptic ulcer disease, which is an imbalance between the acid and the end anti-acid mechanisms in your stomach. But not just stomach, it could be anywhere in the gut. The most common locations is number one, duodenum, number two, stomach. What are you trying to achieve as a healthcare provider? To decrease the stomach acid and therefore decrease the complications or to boost their protective mechanisms. Peptic ulcer disease can have many complications including erosions and then ulcers, bleeding, perforation which can lead to internal bleeding and death because of hypovolemic shock. Reflux to the esophagus over a long period of time can give you metaplasia which is Barrett's esophagus which increases risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma. Listen to your patient carefully. Doctor, doctor, shortly after I eat, I have severe heartburn. This is probably gastric ulcer. No, doctor, after I eat, I'm fine. I actually feel better after I eat. However, three to four hours later, I usually wake up in the middle of the night with severe epigastric pain. That's probably duodenal ulcer. Why does the gastric ulcer worsen with food while the duodenal ulcer improve with eating for a simple reason? Because when you eat, food goes to your stomach and then you close the pyloric sphincter so that there is tons of acid in the stomach. That's why the gastric ulcer is gonna hurt immediately after you eat. However, when you eat, the pyloric sphincter closes the duodenum is protected from the acid in the stomach. That's why the pain of duodenal ulcer improves after you eat. However, give it like four hours and the pyloric sphincter will open and then boom, all of the acid will come from the stomach and will gush onto the duodenum and will worsen your ulcer. For most of human histories, people thought, you know what, the stomach is very acidic. No bacteria live in the stomach whatsoever. Until two Australian scientists argued, you know what, there is a bacteria that lives in the stomach. No one believed them, but they were proven right. 
But how can the H. pylori shoulder the extreme acidity of your stomach? Because the H. pylori has urease enzyme, which converts urea into ammonia. Ammonia is slightly alkaline, so the H. pylori is protected within an alkaline bubble inside your stomach. That's why urease is very important for the Helicobacter pylori bacteria. What's the name of your stomach cell that secretes the acid? Answer, parietal cell. The parietal cell has another function. It secretes the intrinsic factor, which helps absorb vitamin B12. How can I eradicate H. pylori? You have the triple regimen, three medications, or the quadruple regimen, four medications. Let's focus on the triple therapy. Oclam, what's the O? Omeprazole, what's the CL? Clarithromycin, what's the AM? Amoxicillin. Helicobacter pylori, shown by the helicopter bacteria, is a gram-negative bacteria, the gram-negative devil, that is a bacillus, portrayed by the rod. This bacteria is curved, depicted by the curve of the tail of the helicopter, and has a polar flagellum, the pole with the flagellar flag. Furthermore, it is catalase positive, the positive cat, and oxidase positive, the ox daisy. H. pylori is the most common cause of gastric and duodenal ulcers, depicted by the ulcer volcano in the antrum and duodenum. The bacteria survives in the stomach's acidic environment by producing urease, which converts urea to ammonia, here the ammo box, and makes the stomach more alkaline, depicted by the increasing pH scale. A long-term complication of chronic inflammation caused by H. pylori includes gastric adenocarcinoma, shown by the car gnome with the ad sign and the tumor character, and malt lymphoma, portrayed by the malt liquor and the foaming lime. H. pylori infections can be diagnosed on an identification of IgG antibodies on serology, the gold goblin in the test tube, stool antigen, the ants with stool, urease positive breath test, the U eraser coming out of the mouth, or with biopsy, the biopsy needle. The standard treatment is a triple therapy of two antibiotics and a proton pump inhibitor, shown by the two ABX characters with the PPI pump. So in rapid review, Helicobacter pylori is a gram-negative bacillus which is curved. It has a polar flagellum and is catalase positive and oxidase positive. H. pylori infection leads to gastric and duodenal ulcers, and this bacterium converts urea to ammonia, making the stomach more alkaline. Long-term complications of infection include gastric adenocarcinoma and malt lymphoma. Diagnosis is made when serology shows IgG antibodies or if there is a positive stool antigen. Other tests include the urease-positive breath test and gastrointestinal tissue biopsy. The standard treatment is triple therapy with two antibiotics and a proton pump inhibitor. Helicobacter pylori is a gram-negative rod that is curved. It has a positive flagellum, catalase positive, oxidase positive. It can cause gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer. Why? Because it has ammo, ammonia. Because it has urease and this ammonia will give it a relatively neutral environment in the stomach. And it's not just peptic ulcer disease. It can lead to gastritis, gastric adenocarcinoma, as well as maltoma or malt lymphoma. How do I diagnose it? In your serum, look for IgG. In your breath, look for urease. In your stool, look for the antigen, which is part of the bacteria. And then you can biopsy the ulcer. The treatment treatment is Oclam, and as you see, we have two antibiotics plus one proton pump inhibitor. Helicobacter pylori, the helicopter bacteria trying to rescue the stomach, is a gram-negative bacteria that can infect the stomach. It can be transmitted by contaminated foods. Helicobacter pylori infection can lead to gastritis, the stomach on fire, as Helicobacter pylori is a common cause of type B chronic gastritis. Over time, peptic ulcer disease can result, the pepper ulcer volcano. This can include both gastric and duodenal ulcers. Finally, the chronic inflammation and tissue damage induced by Helicobacter pylori can eventually lead to stomach cancer, the stomach tumor character. So, let's review. Helicobacter pylori is a gram-negative bacteria associated with chronic gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. It is considered to be oncogenic because of its relationship to stomach cancer. The diseases caused by H. pylori include gastritis, usually here near the pylorus, peptic ulcer disease including gastric and duodenal ulcers, as well as stomach cancer including adenocarcinoma as well as maltoma. In this picmonic, we will learn about urease positive organisms, illustrated by the story of U eraser positive erasing the symbol of peace in the town. 
Urease positive organisms are a group of organisms that can convert urea to ammonia and carbon dioxide. This is represented by a U rainbow, ammo, and CO2 molecules. The production of ammonia will result in the alkalinization of the medium, which is most often urine. This results in an increased urine pH, shown by an up arrow urinal pH scale. Helicobacter pylori is the first of these organisms and is represented by a helicopter bacteria. This organism is most likely to be found in the stomach. Next is Klebsiella, illustrated by a clubbing sea lion, and Cryptococcus, shown by a crippled cock. Urea plasma, shown by a U rainbow plasma TV, and Proteus, represented by a Prometheus, are two more organisms that express urease. Nocardia is illustrated by a note card, and Staphylococcus epidermidis is represented by a staph on epidermis histology. The final urease positive organism in this pycmonic is Staphylococcus saprophyticus, depicted by a staph sapphire. To recap, urease positive organisms are a group of organisms that can convert urea to ammonia and carbon dioxide. This will result in increased urine pH. These organisms include Proteus, Nocardia, Urea Plasma, Helicobacter pylori, Klebsiella, Cryptococcus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, and Staphylococcus saprophyticus. The urease enzyme converts urea into ammonia, which is relatively more alkaline compared to the stomach acidity. Urease positive organisms include H. pylori, Klebsiella, urea plasma, Proteus, Nocardia, Staph epidermidis, and Staph saprophyticus. This pygmonic helps you assess peptic ulcer disease. Just think about the time this pepper ulcer volcano was awakened on a Sesman Island, much to the dismay of all the island's inhabitants. Peptic ulcers are caused by the bacteria Helicobacter pylori, the helicopter bacteria that came to rescue the island's castaways. And he was carrying this up arrow stomach with an acidic lemon, who squirted juice, upsetting the pepper. This is because increased stomach acid secretion can also lead to peptic ulcers. Patients present with abdominal pain. The abdominal pain bolts on the assessment that were caused by the mayhem of this volcanic eruption. It erupts, leading to this heart burning, as heartburn, or pyrosis, is a common symptom. Melina, or darkened blood in the stool, may be seen, the black melon, which was charred by the flames of the heart, while being weighed on a delta weight scale, as weight changes are another manifestation of this disease. GI distress can also occur, the GI shooting a flare gun, as he is the reason the helicopter showed up leading to this unfortunate chain of events. Considerations of this disease include the fact that ulcers occur most commonly in the proximal part of the intestines, or duodenum, shown by the number one foam finger, dododenum, who was given as a meal to the pepper. This dododenum was eaten, causing these pain bolts to be relieved, as pain is relieved with eating in duodenal ulcers. With gastric ulcers, however, pain is caused by eating, the stomach being eaten, causing pain bolts to appear in the pepper. So, to review the assessment of peptic ulcer disease, it is caused by the bacteria Helicobacter pylori. It can also be caused by increased stomach acid secretion. Patients show abdominal pain, heartburn, melina, and weight loss. GI distress can also occur. Ulcers most commonly occur in the duodenum, and duodenal ulcers are unique because the pain is relieved by eating. Conversely, in gastric ulcers, the pain is caused by eating. Peptic ulcer disease assessment. Peptic ulcer is when you have ulcers in the stomach or the duodenum, and usually you have too much acid and it's associated with H. pylori. The patient complains of abdominal pain and heartburn called pyrosis, melina in the stool, change in total body weight as well as GI distress. Don't forget that duodenal ulcers are more common than gastric ulcers. The pain of duodenal ulcer gets better when you eat, unlike the pain of gastric ulcer which worsens after you eat. Chronic gastritis shown by the old crone and the large stomach, occurs when an inflammatory condition leads to progressive, irreversible metaplasia and atrophy of gastric mucosa and glandular tissue within the stomach. There are two main types, 
Type A is also called autoimmune atrophic gastritis, shown by the right side of the stomach with the A apple. It typically affects the fundus and the body of the stomach, portrayed by the funnel for fundus in the stomach. Type A occurs secondary to an autoimmune attack by the body against the stomach, shown by the automobile crashing into the moon for autoimmune. Self-reactive T cells promote autoantibody formation against the body's own parietal cells, depicted by the antibody attacking the pirate cell. Type A is associated with conditions like autoimmune thyroiditis and type 1 diabetes. Destruction of parietal cells can later lead to pernicious anemia, shown by the prune anemone, due to B12 malabsorption. Achlor hydria can also develop, shown by the acorn hydras, because parietal cell loss leads to absent gastric acid production. Type B chronic gastritis, shown by the B in the left side of the picture, is also called environmental atrophic gastritis. It is the most common type of chronic gastritis, shown by the B holding up the number one foam finger. This type is strongly associated with Helicobacter pylori infection shown by the helicopter in the stomach. This infection typically affects the antrum of the stomach, shown by the ants in the antral region. Over time, persistent inflammation and immune reactivity in the region lymphatic structures places these patients at risk for MALT, or M-A-L-T, lymphomas, portrayed by the foaming lymph limes out of the MALT liquor bottles. Risk factors for developing chronic gastritis include HIV and AIDS, shown by the AIDS Band-Aid, as well as Crohn's disease, shown by the intestinal crown. So in summary, chronic gastritis occurs when the inflammatory condition leads to progressive metaplasia and atrophy of gastric mucosa. Type A is also called autoimmune atrophic gastritis and affects the fundus and the body of the stomach. It's an autoimmune disease characterized by autoantibody formation against parietal cells. Without parietal cells, pernicious anemia and achlorhydria can develop. Type B chronic gastritis is also called environmental atrophic gastritis and is the most common type. It is strongly associated with Helicobacter pylori infection, which involves the antrum of the stomach. Type B patients are at risk for developing MALT lymphomas. Risk factors for developing chronic gastritis include HIV, AIDS, and Crohn's disease. Chronic gastritis, we have type A near the fundus of the stomach and type B near the pylorus. With type A, remember, autoimmune disease. We call this pernicious anemia, which destroys your parietal cell, leading to loss of the intrinsic factor and vitamin B12 deficiency, which is anemia plus neurological symptoms. Type B is more common than type A. Type B is associated with H. pylori. There is increased risk of lymphoma. Don't forget that gastritis is associated with HIV and Crohn's disease. There are four modes to use Picmonic. You can watch the video. This is the educational one that we just did. Or you can try the review mode where you practice active recall. There is also the quiz mode that you see here. And there is also a story mode, which is amazingly crazy. It will give your memory a boost. Here is the quiz mode. Can you answer these three questions? Let me know the answers in the comment section. Picmonic lets you browse topics by your favorite book, by subject, and by system. Every day they will recommend a set of questions for you, and they will link you to the relevant Picmonics. This is my step-by-step -step approach on how I personally use Picmonic. I've been using it for over 10 years. I love it. And here's some epistemology action. The more senses you use over a long period of time, the better for your memory. That's why I'm a fan of Picmonic. In the previous seven microbiology videos, we had a comparison table at the end of each video, which is a wonderful opportunity to review. And today's video is no exception. Legionella nemophila versus H. pylori. Both are gram negative, both are rods. You can add that H. pylori is a curved rod. Both are oxidase positive. 
Legionella pneumophila will give you the Legionnaire's disease or the Pontiac fever. Look at this double N, pneumonia, hyponatremia, CNS problems, Pontiac fever. Helicobacter pylori will give you gastritis, usually type B, peptic ulcer disease, most commonly in the duodenum, gastric cancer, including adeno and malt lymphoma. You diagnose Legionella pneumophila by finding the antigen in the urine, but in H. pylori, the antigen is in the stool. You can use other tests, such as the silver stain and charcoal yeast agar, enriched with iron and cysteine for Legionella. For H. pylori, we use urease breath test, serum IgG antibody, and you can biopsy the ulcer. Legionella pneumophila is treated with macaroni lights or the flower queen, but H. pylori is treated with the triple therapy OCLAM, one proton pump inhibitor, two antibiotics. Do not forget that clarithromycin is indeed a macrolide. If you want to really remember this for a long period of time, please pause this video with each picmonic and try to practice recall. Here is Legionella characteristics, and these are the diseases caused by Legionella. The atypical pneumonia with hyponatremia is a favorite exam question. Here are the characteristics of H. pylori. Please don't ever forget that she is urease positive catalase positive, oxidase positive. The antigen is in the stool, urease is in your breath, and IgG is in your serum. H. pylori can cause many diseases, including gastritis, including peptic ulcer disease, including stomach cancer, which could be adenocarcinoma or malt lymphoma. These are the urease positive organisms. Do not forget my H. pylori, my Klebsiella, my Cryptococcus, my urea plasma, Proteus, Nocardias, two staphs, Epidermidus, and Saprophyticus. These are the clinical presentations of a person with peptic ulcer disease. If you find symptoms of peptic ulcer disease, plus watery diarrhea, plus dozens of ulcers in the duodenum, think zollinger ellison syndrome. Chronic gastritis type A is autoimmune, that's the pernicious anemia. Type B is bacterial and this is H. pylori. If you go to Picmonic and sign up today, you can have access to more than 1,400 visual Picmonics. This is a short and non-comprehensive list of all the bacteria covered on Picmonic, let alone viruses, fungi, parasites, and other subjects, such as anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, psychology, internal medicine, OBGYN, toxicology, genetics, etc. Whether you are a medical student, nursing student, PA student, etc. Picmonic can be of tremendous help. You can try them for free by using the link in the description. You can use Picmonic on the web. They also have an app for your phone or tablet. So what are you waiting for? Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Picmonic for sponsoring this video. Remember that learning does not have to be hard. Just keep calm and use Picmonic. I'll see you next video. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard, and go to Picmonic.